Taking one problem and another problem and smashing them together is how I get through life. So problem number one, I make lots of step sequencers in both Pure Data and Maximus P. While it is fun to play around, using the trackpad to change the pattern is a bit of a hassle. I have to drag the cursor to the targeted step in order to click to turn it on or off. And I can only do one at a time. It's very slow and inefficient. If I had a multi-touch interface that also displayed the sequencer, that would be ideal. So I could purchase a new iPad for that, but... Problem number two. I have the Akai APC Mini that I never use. I bought it around seven years ago, but I ended up realizing that producing music with Ableton's clip launch didn't really fit my workflow. Okay, I think you know where I'm going with all of this. I would like to use the APC to display and control a step sequencer that's in Pure Data or Max. So the idea is, when I press one of the buttons on the APC, the corresponding step in the software sequencer will be turned on or off. And I would also want the light to turn on or off as well. Finally, I would like to also display the moving sequence. If you have the normal APC, you can apply what you see in this video. Also, I'll be saying just pure data instead of pure data and max MSP together. Finally, I'll include the patcher. So if you have an APC mini, I hope you have some fun with it. Let's first make sure that the APC is being recognized by pure data. Plug the USB cable and then open up pure data. Go to the MIDI setting and choose the APC Mini for both input and output. Okay, now we're ready. These buttons are like the keys on your MIDI keyboard. So it should be straightforward to send a MIDI note message from each button to pure data. By using the note in object, we can send a MIDI note message from the APC and display it inside of pure data. So this is MIDI note 56, and the velocity goes from 0 to 127 when the button is pressed down. We can use this information to turn on and off the steps. We can simply use the select object and connect it to the velocity outlet of node in. And then connect that to a toggle, and perfect. Now for the uncertain part of this journey. Can we send a message from pure data to the APC in order to change the brightness of a button? Each button on the APC has an LED, and it can light up in either green, red, or orange. There is a node out object. Maybe we can do something with this. Again, this button is MIDI note 56. Let's send 0 to the velocity. Okay, nothing happens. I guess it could be that it's brightness 0. Let's try 1. Aha, now we're getting somewhere. So 1 is green, 2 is orange, and 3 is red. Awesome. Here's a perfect place for me to explain the concept of hot and cold inlet. You might be wondering why I'm also triggering the message object that says 56 at the same time as I change the parameter for the second inlet of node out. So check this out. When I'm changing just the parameter for the second inlet, nothing happens. The first inlet of every pure data object is called a hot inlet, and the rest are cold inlets. In order for an object to be activated, a trigger or a bang needs to be sent to the hot inlet. So that's why we need to do this. I often put delay 1 before an object that is connected to a hot inlet like this. I do this in order to make sure that the parameter for the cold inlet is changed right before the hot inlet is activated. So you'll be seeing delay 1 in lighter parts of the video for that reason. Okay, let's combine what we have so far. When we press this button, it lights up green. And when we press it again, it turns off. Perfect. Okay, we can bring in the software sequencer now. We have a step sequencer made in Pure Data right here. If you're new to Pure Data, I do have a tutorial on it that I recommend you watch before this video. Let's have a moving red sequence animation happening. So delay object is crucial. Okay, let's combine the light on off algorithm with the sequencer. Because every step has the node in object, we need to distinguish each step from another. Every single node in object will activate whenever any button is pressed. So each step needs a MIDI note ID. Otherwise, this happens. So that's why there's the equal object that's connected to a gate. 
Here are two separate steps with differing MIDI now ID. Notice how the on-off message will only go through for the step with the matching MIDI note. If you have an APC in person, it'll help to press buttons around to dissect what's going on. Before we bring in the rest sequence, let's make everything cleaner by using abstractions. You'll also make patching in the rest sequence more efficient too. Let's have an abstraction for each step and call it APC step. One inlet is for the MIDI note ID, and the other inlet is for the sequence trigger. The toggle message is connected to the outlet object, which is connected to the gate object that's outside of each abstraction. We can now easily and cleanly create an A-step sequencer. When we bring in the moving rest sequence, we run into a bit of an issue. For example, if we have this step turned on, after the rest sequence passes by, the light does not go back to green. So we need to make sure that our software sequencer remembers the status of each step. So simply adding a number box right here will help us solve that problem. It's being used as a sort of memory saver recaller thing. When we press the button to turn on the green light, it's one. And when we press again to turn the light off, it's zero. So the delay object that is used for the rest sequence should be connected to this number object instead of the zero message object. And now it's working. A step sequencer is cool and all, but let's turn it into a 16 step. So change this into 16, add 8 more here, and add 8 more here also. Notice how abstractions help us patch efficiently and quickly. This button is MIDI note 48. Now check this out. Let's add snare and hi-hat. In order to make it easier to duplicate and also edit all at once, what should we do? That's right, let's make an abstraction that can be used for each instrument. The parameters for this abstraction is the MIDI note ID for each row of the APC. And now I can just copy two more, change the MIDI note ID, and change the audio sample name right here. And now, we got ourselves a 16-step sequencer for three instruments. Let's hear it in action. Actually, before we do that, let's send MIDI data from these sliders. Use this object and scale the value to 0.0, .0 to 0 0.9 for amplitude. Now we're ready. Obviously, we can continue to develop this further, but I'll leave the rest up to you. For some suggestions, we can use these buttons for randomizing patterns. These buttons could be used for soloing or muting. And perhaps this button could be used for glitch effect. What's also super fun is to do some polymetric sequencing. Remember that orange light that we didn't use for this video? What I've done before is to use the orange light to display a polymeter pattern like this. Okay, have fun, and I'll see you in the next video.